Hey friends, it's Anna. Welcome to my September wrap up where we are going to discuss all the amazing books I read last month while creating some spreads for them in my reading journal. I had lots of four and five star reads in September, so hopefully you might get some book recommendations out of this video. And I also love the fall academia vibes that this journal setup will have. Grab some tea or coffee, get cozy, and let's start journaling. I'm starting off with the cover page on the left side, and as you can see, I pulled this page from an old Harry Potter book as kind of our base, and then we're going to collage together the rest of the page on top of that. I love creating a vintage, antique aesthetic in my reading journal, and my specific theme for September is old books and bookshops, which is completely based off of this washi tape. I'm going to be using it throughout the entire setup. This is the cats and books tape from the washi tape shop, and I am so obsessed with it. Perfect for creating some dark academia-esque spreads for this fall and winter. All the images on the tape are serrated with a kiss cut line so you can peel them off like stickers. So I added a little bookshop to the base. Before I get too much further in with the collage though, I wanted to go ahead and add our title. I wrote out September books with my Tombow Furunosuke brush pen in a calligraphy font and then I'm giving this title a little frame with a black and brown Tombow pen. I'll link all the supplies I'm using in this setup in the description box below, including this Cats and Books washi tape, and I am an affiliate with the washi tape shop, so you can always use my code ANNABRUNS10 for 10% off your entire order over there. We're pasting in the title, and I also added some more washi tape stickers to help me determine the title placement. I will eventually switch those out though. I played around a lot with this cover page. I just kept on looking at it and wanting to change things here and there. I guess that's the nature of collaging, but for now I'm just pulling a bunch of images from the tape and placing them around the title. I also used a few neutral colors from my grid tape set. This is what the cover page looks like for now, but about halfway through this right page, which will be a summary of my reading month, you'll see me come back to the cover page and make a few more changes, which I think does make it look better. Moving on over to this right side, which like I mentioned will be a little summary of my reading last month. We'll have some reading stats and book covers of all the books I read. For the book covers, I actually made them into stickers using my Lean PixCut Sticker Maker. I was just recently gifted this tool, so I've been making a ton of custom stickers at home. You'll see later in this setup, I'll print some fan art from some of the books as stickers so I can use those in the individual book spreads as well. And if you're interested in home sticker making or this product, I recently made a video reviewing and journaling with it for the first time, so I'll link that if you want to check it out. So we have the book covers at the top of this spread, and before I get into adding my reading stats, I'm decorating with some more washi tape images. I thought this red and dark green bookshop matched perfectly with the color scheme of the book covers. And here's where we're going to pop back over to the cover page real quick and rearrange some things. The whole time when I was starting on the summary page, I kept on glancing over and thinking I needed to add something else to the cover. So I brought in some scrapbook paper. I love this vintage floral pattern with the subtle pink in the flowers. I'm also going to add some more paper in the bottom right and change up the washi tape images. We're actually going to move that open book with the petals or sparkles or whatever those are coming out the middle to the right page. And I'm adding in a different book image there with some flowers to tie in with the scrapbook paper. I liked this collage, but what I thought would look really good is adding in some brush pen colors to both these pages. I chose some neutrals with a touch of pink to match the flowers, and we're just going to add some color dots to finish off the cover. I'm going to use the pink to highlight the title, and then I'm also going to bring these colors into the right page to highlight the reading stat titles. 
I keep track of a lot of stats throughout this journal, but for my monthly wrap-ups, I pretty much always record these four. First, we have genre. In September, I read five books and three of them were fantasy. One was historical fiction and one was literary fiction or could also fall under ergodic literature. The next stat is format, so I read two of these physically, listened to two of them on audio, and then listened slash read to Harry Potter. Next is rating, and I will go over which of these stats apply to which books on each individual book spread, but this was a really good reading month. I had two five stars, two four stars, and one three and a half star. One of those four stars was also actually a four and a half, so a very highly rated reading month. Lastly, I like tracking how long it takes me to read books. So one of these, The Woman, I finished in under a week. Two of them took me one to two weeks to read. One of them was three to four weeks. And The Well of Ascension took me just over a month to finish. Not because it was bad, quite the opposite, but because I was really enjoying taking my time with it and only picking it up when I had a chunk of time where I knew I could really fall into the story. I'm going to finish off this spread by enclosing the stats and filling in some of the leftover space. I would love to hear from you guys how you track your reading, if you do it all. A journal, Goodreads, Notion, any particular formats. I recently set up a Notion, finally, and so far I'm using it mostly for work organization, but I know some people have really cute book-related pages, so I might be interested in tracking some things on there and then transferring it to my journal, because I don't always have my journal on hand to record things right away. So if you have any templates or ideas, please leave them in the comments. I love experimenting with different systems for record keeping and productivity, so I'm very excited to figure out Notion. And what's been a huge help in that so far is the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. You guys know I'm a huge fan of this community. I've been a member actually long before they reached out to partner with me. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. They're an on-demand platform with stackable lessons, offering creative classes in countless categories. I'm currently taking Ali Abdal's Notion Masterclass to help me maximize my use of this new tool, and it's so helpful because there's so much you can do in Notion that I would have never realized on my own. Skillshare offers so many options for creative and business-related interests, from illustration and drawing to videography and logo design to music classes. I mentioned Stackable Lessons because one of my favorite features is their learning paths, which are curated groups of classes centered on mastering a certain skill. I've been working through all of Ali Abdal's productivity classes, like the Notion one I mentioned, and I also got so many helpful tips from his general productivity masterclass. If you are also wanting to pursue your creative hobbies or level up your career-related skills this fall, Skillshare has given me a special deal for you guys. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so be sure to go check that out today. Getting back to the journal, the first book we're going to make a spread for is LMNOP by Mark Dunn. This is the literary fiction or ergodic literature. It could also be classified as an epistolary novel, which means it's told through letters that the characters are writing to each other. This was one of the most unique books I've ever read in my life. It was short and sweet, only about 200 pages, but I loved it. Also for this spread, we're going to be veering a little bit from the bookshop aesthetic and I'm going to be pulling from this Autumn Friends tape from the washi tape shop. This tape was like the exact vibe of this book, so I just had to use it here. 
So the premise of this book sounds kind of strange, and it is. There's an imaginary island where our characters reside, and the people of this island kind of hero worship this man Nevin Nollop because he coined a phrase that uses every letter in the alphabet but is only 32 letters long. This town is very linguistics focused and they have a monument to Nollop with his coined phrase, but when letters start to fall off the monument, the island leadership starts banning those corresponding letters. And since the novel is told through the perspective of our characters writing each other letters, as each alphabetical letter gets banned, that letter can no longer appear in the novel, which is so interesting and honestly hilarious to watch unfold. This was such a fun and lighthearted story that was obviously so silly because the scenario is crazy, but it was such a fun way to touch on themes of censorship and freedom of expression. If you are at all a fan of linguistics or just appreciate words and language, you will definitely love this story. And I would just highly recommend it to anyone. It's such a quick read, but the setting of the island and the cast of characters really come alive through their letters. I read this one with my book club. It's definitely a fun one to discuss with friends. And we had a fun time trying to text in our group message only using the letters that were left according to which chapter we were on in the book. I have so much respect for the author being able to write chapters when he could no longer use like half the letters in the alphabet. Next up, we have a spread for one of my five-star reads. This is The Woman by Kristen Hanna, and Hanna has done it again. She's managed to completely emotionally wreck me with a book. I don't know how she does it, but the attachment and emotional connection I feel with her characters is just unmatched. So this is a historical fiction, and thank you to one of you guys actually for recommending me this one. The book follows our main character, Frankie McGrath, who's an American nurse in the 1960s and decides to follow her brother to Vietnam and serve as a combat nurse in the war. This story covers so much from being a woman at war, dealing with the aftermath of traumatic experiences, difficult family relationships, friendship, and romance. And this is something I've noticed about Kristen Hanna in this book and others. Her plots are very winding. They don't follow the typical pattern of like rising action, a singular climax, and then a conclusion. There's always so much happening and you never quite know where the story is going to go. And I think I realized in this novel that's part of the reason why her books feel so real. Real life doesn't follow a preset pattern. There's so many ups and downs and unexpected turns. And the way Kristen Hanna builds her characters and her plots really reflects that. I think that's the core of why this book is five stars to me. It's a fictional story, but Frankie's decisions and thought process and reactions were so realistic, she really felt like a true person. And so it is just absolutely heartbreaking when you witness her story. It feels like this is happening to a friend you know so well and care so much about. Aside from the characters, the setting also came to life so strongly. There'd be little mentions of the song that was playing on the radio or the outfits and haircuts people would have, and it conjured up such a strong feeling of the 60s and 70s. I could probably list so many other things that were great about this book, so obviously I would highly recommend this one. I've also read The Nightingale, which was 5 stars, and The Great Alone by this author. I would love to continue working my way through Kristen Hanna's backlog, so let me know which of her books I should read next, or if you've read any of the ones I have, I'd love to hear your opinions. 
Next up, we have a spread for The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Mistborn series, which I'm reading for the first time right now. These are actually my first books by Brandon Sanderson, but I have been meaning to read him for so long, so I'm very happy to be finally getting into the Cosmere. These books are not disappointing so far. I really enjoyed this second book in the series. In case you're not familiar with Mistborn, this is a fantasy series with the kind of overarching theme of a thieving crew trying to overthrow a dystopian-esque empire. I don't really know how to describe much more detail than that. It's kind of hard to explain the plots of fantasy books, especially when you get further into a series without giving away what's happened. But from the very beginning of this series, it had a really cool and unique magic system and such an interesting world. There were a couple of things I really enjoyed about this second book especially. We started getting some different POVs. I particularly loved getting Ellen's POV. He is our main love interest, but I also really enjoyed his character arc and the plot that he was at the center of. We also continued learning so much more about the fantasy world, the lore of this empire, and uncovering even more secrets about the magic system. I feel like the first Mistborn book had more of a heist vibe, and this book was more of the political intrigue and scheming. I cannot wait to see how this first trilogy within the Mistborn series wraps up. I have already started the third book. I gave The Well of Ascension and the first book 4 stars, but I feel like this has the potential to be a 5 star series overall. Taken together, the magnitude of the world building and the interconnected plots and characters, it's so immersive and I really did enjoy every time I got to sit down and read this story. So for this book spread, you saw I printed out some fan art of our main character, Vin, and her dog, who is introduced in this book, as a sticker. I also have the metal symbol for ATM. I'm sure if you've read this series, you'll appreciate that. I found all the fan art I'm printing on Pinterest, so I'll leave links below. I couldn't find the actual artist, but I will leave the link to the pin I found this one on. Now I'm writing out some quotes that I really liked from this book. The one on the bottom I kind of paraphrased on the page, but it goes, Good men don't become legends, he said quietly. Good men don't need to become legends. She opened her eyes looking up at him. They just do what's right anyways. And the other quote goes, It's easy to believe in something when you win all the time. The losses are what defines a man's faith. Moving over to the last thread of this setup, and I'm going to split this page between two books. First we have The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, and then you guys might know I'm rereading Harry Potter right now in honor of fall. But first to Kiss of Deception, this is a YA fantasy romance, which can either be really good or really bad. This one was both in different aspects. I think I kind of set myself up for disappointment here because my expectations were so high. Earlier this year, I read the Dance of Thieves duology by this author, and that was actually like my first foray into the romanticy genre, and I loved that duology. I gave both of them five stars, I think. It's still probably my favorite romanticy that I've read so far, so I think my expectations were a little too high for this book being by the same author. I did love certain aspects of it, like the overall plot and setup was great. Our main character, Leah, is a princess being married off to the prince of a neighboring kingdom to form an alliance due to the impending threat of another realm. 
but Leah does not want to be a pawn in these politics, so she runs away, and not only does the spurned prince come after her, but so does an assassin from the other kingdom. And since this is a romanticy, of course a love triangle between the three is what ensues. And it was so entertaining. Of course this premise is a little ridiculous, but it was such good fun to read about. I also loved the setting, the little town that Leah is trying to build her new life in. She works in a tavern, the town was having their annual festival. It was giving me major Ella Enchanted vibes. So I really enjoyed the overall feel and plot and I really liked all of our characters too. The things that detracted for me was I never tend to like love triangles, it's one of my least favorite tropes, and there was a direction that the plot took in the second half of the book that I found kind of boring and tedious. Both of those things might be personal preference related, but that's where the three and a half stars comes in. I am still planning on finishing the series, it'll be a while because I have to wait for the next audiobook on Libby, but if the plot can pick up again, which I think it will based on how the book ended, I think I will have a good time listening to the rest of the series. Now onto this little section at the bottom for the second Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. You guys know I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd, I've been a fan ever since I read these books for the first time in elementary school. These are actually the books that got me into reading in the first place, so they have a very special place in my heart. I don't do my typical reading journal spreads for them since I've read them so many times, but I thought it'd be fun this year to assign a different Hogwarts class to each book and decorate each spread according to that. I chose Herbology for the second book because of course we have the Mandrakes who play an important role in this story. I used the sticker maker to print out all the class names, and I had done a charms theme for the first book, so I'm flipping back to that spread so I can add that label now that I had made these stickers. You can see my spread for the first Mistborn book there as well actually. I'll leave a link to that reading journal video so you can check out that spread and hear more about the first Mistborn book if you're interested. I'm playing around with some more stickers from the Cats and Books washi tape set to finish off this page, and that will complete my September reading journal spreads. Again, please let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts, or feel free to leave me any book recommendations based off of these because I do keep a running list of any books you guys suggest. Let's do a final flip through of the spreads. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed journaling and talking about these books with me. Don't forget to get started on Skillshare with the link in my description, and happy reading!